Welcome to the first in a video series about Adobe Lightroom Classic. It's important to be aware that there are two versions of Lightroom now. There's Adobe Cla Lightroom Classic and Adobe Lightroom CC. We're talking about the classic version here. This is the version that's designed for desktops primarily and local storage of photos. Um, so that's what we're gonna talk about. I'm gonna introduce you to what I call the map to Adobe Lightroom Classic. The map is the Michael approved process. It applies uh, especially to uh, the import process. Uh, one of the reasons I really enjoy using Lightroom is it helps me manage my photos. It helps me keep my photos organized and it lets me do with just one piece of software, Lightroom, uh, a multiple uh, set of tasks in organizing my photos. Uh, it takes a little getting used to, it's a little different, but uh, Lightroom's pretty powerful and it's really good at automating some tasks. So I'll walk through my process on that today and show you how that works, how I use this uh, Lightroom to in part organize my photos as the first step and that first step is called the import process. While I'm here, I think I'll talk a little bit about my, my editing philosophy and using software to, to, uh, to edit our photos. I'm fine with it. Uh, I really enjoy ed the editing process. I think for me, it allows me to finish my photos, to add the last, um, an extra bit of my style me to the photos. Uh, I might choose a little bit different color than someone else might, or a little brighter or a little darker. Uh, some things that um, tend to become kind of a style, that's a little bit of an overused word, but I think it works. I have a way I prefer to edit photos. I tend to lean towards um, just a little bit of color and drama, uh, but not hopefully too overt. Uh, I wanna uh, honor and keep what was mostly there to begin with. I'll make exposure corrections, color corrections, uh, remove distractions, I'll, I'll crop, all that kind of stuff. But I, I want it when folks look at my photos, I hope they see the photo first, not the editing. That's how I approach using software like Adobe Lightroom. So I'll uh, get started in the process here in just a minute. We'll uh, switch over to the computer, walk you through on the desktop uh, how this all works, at least the way I do it. Again, there are multiple ways to do this. I found most people uh, this process works as far as a baseline for organizing your photos using Adobe Lightroom Classic. I hope it helps. If you have questions, uh, please leave comments below or uh, send me an email. I look forward to hearing from you as you need assistance. Thanks. Now on to Adobe Lightroom. Right, so we're gonna begin the, uh, the import process for Adobe Lightroom Classic uh, on our computer. Uh, I'm gonna assume the, uh, you either have a, a camera memory card inserted into your computer or the photos you want to import are already on your computer. Uh, this process will work with photos uh, from a camera or from a phone. Uh, the process to get the photos from a phone to your to computer is a little different, and I have a sequence of videos on YouTube about that, which I'll link in the notes below, uh, how to do that, get the photos from your phone to your computer using uh, Google Photos. So I'll link to those photos in the notes uh, for this, uh, this video. So we'll get started here by launching Adobe Lightroom Classic. Uh, as of the time of this writing, this is the most current version. This is, which version are we on? We are on version 8.3.1. So here's the process. Um, basically, um, to begin, we need to uh, import our photos. And the module I use to do that, Adobe uh, Lightroom uses modules for different functions of editing or um, other processes with your photos. And the two that are most common are the library module and the develop module. We'll use the library module for importing photos. Uh, so if that's not already selected on your computer, uh, please click here on the library module. What that does is in the lower left corner, now we have a nice handy button that says import, which will begin our import process. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. It brings us to a new window. Since my photos uh, are 
I have my memory card already inserted. Uh, it is showing the contents of that memory card already. Uh, that's what you see up here in the top left, the from selection. Uh, if you're not seeing your photos or you have your photos uh, from your memory card or um, you are importing photos from uh, files that are already on the computer and not on a card, you would click here where it says from and then click there and then pull down and choose other source. This will bring you to your computer window. By the way, this works on a Mac and a PC where you'll see the various options, uh, and I have many, sorry, uh, of, of places where you can find your photos. Here are, on a Macintosh, here are the, the drives that are connected to your computer. So that's where you would find your uh, computer, mem I mean, your camera memory card. Um, and depending on where, and then you would look here at your computer on a Macintosh to see where you saved your photos, uh, at least temporarily. So once you point the Lightroom at your photos, um, you will see them here. You will get previews for the photos and you can change the size of this preview down in the lower right corner is a thumbnail slider which if you drag to the right the photos will get larger which makes them a little easier to see. Now I would not at this stage make choices about which photos are good or which photos are bad. I would uh, choose them all uh, and the, the way you know they're chosen is there's a checkbox in the top left corner of the frame for each photo. Uh, I, I don't choose which one's the best. You can see I have many photos. One's going to be a little sharper or the sharpest than the rest. I'll choose that later when I'm uh, in the other module. So um, I'm going to select all these photos, and that's the default, all photos. In the lower left corner, it will tell you how many photos are selected. I have 67 photos selected here. And... Um, if the photos are coming from a memory card, by default, Lightroom will change this way it operates to copy. If your photos are already on the computer, say you copied them uh, from a phone or some other source, by default, Lightroom's mode of working is add when the files are already on the computer here, and you would want to switch to copy. Switch to copy to do the rest of the steps. So... There are three basic steps to importing your photos, to organizing them as you're importing them, as you're bringing them to your computer and letting Lightroom organize, sort, and uh, get ready for working. Um, I do all the steps for this in Lightroom because it's automated, it's easy, and uh, once you do it a couple times, it will only take about one minute. So... Uh, when you first launch Lightroom, or if you haven't changed any of these uh, settings before, uh, I'm going to help you uh, change a couple things before we get started. Uh, again, this is the, the way I work. So in the destination panel on the right-hand side, so on the far right-hand side of Lightroom, uh, in the import panel, uh, I want to change this instruction. I want to change the instruction of how it's going to organize my photos I'm importing from the option that it chooses by default, which is by date, I want to change that to into one folder. This way, the photos that are taken on different dates will all, all the photos will be in one folder instead of a separate folder for each individual date, which I find personally confusing. So that's all I'm going to do with destination. I'm going to uh, do the rest of the steps up here. In, uh, that'll be step one. File handling will be step two. Some components there. File renaming will be part three. So we'll start at the top. And what we're doing in this step is telling Lightroom where to save the photos on the computer. Uh, this is a little confusing if you already have photos from your phone on the computer. Those are kind of temporary. This will be the permanent home for your photos. Organize the way you would like to use them. So click where it says 2 and then Macintosh or whatever your hard drive name is. And then the option I suggest is Other Destination. This lets you choose a direct location and create new folders for uh, organizing your photos. So the way I do this, I put stuff, um, well, 
my, the simplest place to put your photos uh, is maybe on your desktop. I don't personally do that in my day to day stuff, but for our demonstration, I will. I'm going to put them on my desktop so they're easy to find. Uh, so on a Macintosh, that's here in this left column here. And then I'm going to create a new folder uh, in a moment. Uh, what I do here is I'm creating a file structure so that I can find my photos uh, potentially uh, tomorrow or a month from now or, or a number of years down the road. Uh, this structure works really well. It, it creates a master folder for all of your photos, all your originals. And then each photo project gets its own folder inside of that. Uh, for my uh, my photography uh, business, I even have it organized in a couple subfolders. So I'll have a folder for weddings inside my master photos folder. And then inside the weddings folder will be uh, the specific events, uh, multiples of those. So let's just keep it simple for today. And on your desktop, make a new folder and give it a name that makes sense. And maybe it's uh, your your name of your photo, your na your name plus photos, or uh, something creative. Or we're gonna I'm gonna keep this simple for now, and I'm gonna call it imports. Uh, these are the original photos. Since we're on the import step, I think imports for a name makes some sense if you don't have a better option. So I'm gonna create that. Now that's on my desktop. Desktop imports. And inside my imports folder, I'm going to make a new folder for this project I'm working on. And um, this project I'm working on is uh, for an assignment for uh, students, and it's uh, the nature assignment. So I'm just going to call it nature, and uh, I will then create that. So the path is your desktop or wherever your home is for your photos, whatever source location. And then an imports folder or an originals folder. Maybe it's your name with the word photos. That's how I do mine. And then inside of that, this specific project has a place to go. So I'm going to click choose on that. And that is set up the instruction. When the photos get saved to my computer and copied from the memory card, that's where they'll go on the computer. Uh, that's what we're doing here on this sidebar is we're creating instructions for Lightroom to execute when we complete the import process. Step number two in the import process is to organize the photos inside of Lightroom itself. Lightroom organizes photos using, uh, their, their term is collections. Uh, instead of albums, they use collections for their name. Uh, think of it like a playlist uh, in your, on your phone in your music player uh, for songs. So you would have a collection of songs maybe for, for workout or for driving or for going to bed. It's just a simple way to organize a, a, a sequence of uh, songs in that case uh, around a theme, a subject, or a mood. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing here with collections. It's, it's an organizing structure for a group of related photos. So the, to, to get started with this, we're going to click in the file handling section. So if you're not seeing that panel, just click on the triangle to the right of the word file handling, and you will now see those details. We're going to go right to the bottom where it says add to collection. We're going to click there, and that turns this uh, activity on. And now I want to create a new selection by clicking on the plus sign to the right of the word add to collection. I'm going to click on that. It brings up the window for uh, collection creation. Say that 10 times fast. Um, and I'm going to give it a name. The name I give collections mirrors the name I gave the folder on the computer in this first step. So this is step number two. I'm going to call this nature. Uh, oftentimes I'll add dates and locations as well, but I'm going to keep this uh, simple for right now. Well, let's just do nature. I'm going to keep it simple. We'll just do nature. Uh, we'll leave the options alone for now. Uh, again, keeping this simple. So click create. And we've created the instruction for how Lightroom will organize the photos inside the Lightroom database. Step one, created a, a place for the photos to be saved on the computer. And then step two in file handling creates a place for them to uh, be organized in Lightroom. Last step and step number three is to give the photos actual names. And this is one of the most powerful ways to be able to find your photos later. Um, 
If a photo by default from your camera or your phone is called img385629.jpg, that doesn't mean anything. But uh, I'm going to name these photos with a name by uh, clicking on Rename Files. And then I'm going to choose how I want to name it. By default, the name is uh, just adds the date to the file name. Uh, by default, my uh, photos here are df, dsf, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it would add the date in front of that. That's not very helpful. So I'm going to choose where it change the date naming convention from date dash file name to custom name dash sequence. Uh, I like that convention. It's nice and simple. So I will give this a, a name now by, I have to specify the name each time I import uh, for each project. And I do that by clicking where it says uh, untitled to the right of the word custom text. And I'm going to type a name. Uh, this time I will add a little detail. I'm going to do nature dash Sammamish. That's the location. That's where I live. And then I'm going to add a date. I use The date format I use is year then month, two digits each. Uh, this is July, and it is the 5th of July. So again, that makes it relatively easy uh, down the road for me to find my photos. I can look up all the photos uh, that have Sammamish in the name, and uh, then I can find stuff pretty quickly. So our th that's our last third step. Uh, if you forget to do this, your photos will be untitled with a sequence number, which isn't super helpful. So these three steps are now complete. We've given Lightroom instructions what to do upon import. And then the way you complete the import is down here in the bottom right uh, with the import button. Oh, one more thing. I forgot to say this at the beginning. If your photos look like they're uh, in, in this window, look like they're not in uh, any order, <laughs> or at least they're, they're, it seem like they're not in the order you took them, uh, that is controlled down here uh, by the sort down here at the bottom. The sort is, if it's off, they'll be potentially in a, just a random order like, like this now. But if you change it to capture time, they will be in the, seek, the order they were taken with the oldest photo being in the top left and the newest photo being in the bottom right. So there we go. We've got all our instructions set. We've got Lightroom configured. All we got to do is click import and everything will be uh, importing. You'll see a progress bar up here, um, which takes a little bit of time depending on how many photos you have, uh, what you're doing. You will start to see photos fill up here. Uh, I'm going to pause this uh, or just let it go and we'll skip ahead when it's done. Please hold. All right, once uh, Lightroom is all done with its import, uh, by default, uh, if you were using a camera memory card, that card will be ejected so you can safely remove it. Uh, and then you will see over here on the left-hand side uh, a collection with your nature photo, well, my nature photos in it, or whatever uh, collection you created when you first imported your photos. Uh, they should all be here. And again, uh, you can change the thumbnail size to look at uh, get a better view. Uh, we will discuss uh, next steps, uh, how to do the basic panel edits uh, in the next video. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them below in the comments or um, uh, send me an email with those questions. I look forward to hearing from you. And next up is the basic panel.